All right. We definitely want to say tap of the good evening to each and every one. This is the Lion TV show. So what we're going to do right about now, Miss Winsome, we're going to give them opportunity, give them time to come into the room. And I'm going to play one of your beautiful songs in the meantime. So give people a chance to be in the room. Just log inside the room. Make sure you share the page. Keep telling your friend. Just keep hitting share. Maurice, how are you? Elaine, Margaret, you know me. I number one. You know me. Nadine, I see you. Barry, I see people logging in. That's beautiful. Make sure as soon as you log inside of the room, you just send the love out to your friends and invite them right about now. Winston, can you see me um, typing? Okay, yeah, I can see. <laughs> You're only hurting me. Radalax, the respect. Ladies and gentlemen, we are via satellite from London to the United States. It's only done on the Lion TV show. Miss Winsome, she's right in the UK. And of course, I'm in the United States and we're doing this via satellite. Only on the Lion TV show, you'll get that. So just stand by in a minute. We're going to do a beautiful interview. So black reggae artist, so black in the building. You guys just sent out the link. It's going to be a beautiful evening. Before you're taking any action, so tell me why. Why are you doing this to me? Oh my gosh, they're showing a lot of love. Glory, I see you. Kenny, the love. Vivian, I see you. Atlanta family is there. You know what I'm saying? Easy Miriam out of Jamaica. Mod Tech, Mod Vibes. Y'all just send the link on all my triplets, Waynets. Enough respect. You're hurting me. You're only hurting me. Stop hurting me. Stop hurting me. You're only hurting me. Oh, baby. Stop hurting me. Stop hurting me. You're only hurting me. 
hurting me. You're only hurting me. It's so beautiful here. You know what I'm saying? As you know, you, ladies and gentlemen, you can look at Miss Winsome. She is laughing. She's having fun. And I like that she's smiling to everybody. And definitely, we definitely want to thank each and every one for being here in the room to share this moment with her. Now, Miss Winsome, I want you to wave your hand. I want you to say hi to your fans. Hi. Hi. Spreading the love. <laughs> Okay, I needed to turn up your volume a little bit so that they could hear your full flow and things like that because I want I don't want them to miss anything from you. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me clearly now? You're still low. You're still low. You was up earlier. I put it right to uh, the top. You have to come closer. You got to come closer to the mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I'm, I'm hearing you perfect. I'm hearing you Great. perfect. Yes, Great. I can. We're hearing you. We're live. Now, Miss Winsome, I definitely uh, want to welcome you. And I want you to tell all the folks that haven't, who has no idea who you are and let them know where you're broadcasting from and say a little bit about yourself to your fans right now. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be on the show today. Um, as Triple Five said, my name is Winston Moncrief Mitchell. I'm coming live from London, the Croydon area. Um, I'm originally from Birmingham. I'm a lover's rock singer and I've been singing for the past oh, about 30, about 35 years now. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you hear, we, she's definitely out of Birmingham. All right. Now, Miss, Miss Winsome, we have so much to talk about. And um, originally, you were born in Birmingham. And um, I think like within 19, 1983, you left Birmingham and went to, to London. Now, I wanted to know why that trends, trends, you know, action from Birmingham to England was, did you think the music in Birmingham, you wouldn't be better off being in Birmingham, but the music would be much more better in London? Um, yes, yeah, so there's definitely more opportunities for music, um, for music in London. Um, I also moved down to come down to study as well. And London's like the big city. So there was much more opportunities down here for singers like myself. Okay, so all right, so now you 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 went to London within the eighties in nineteen eighty three, and um, I probably before you start even get back into the singing, you you know you went to school and did a little acting. Is that correct? It was more like, you know, when you're in school and you love singing, so you get involved in some of the um, productions, what the school was putting on. So, you know, I'd always be singing in the playground with my hairbrush, teething out my mom's clothes and dressing up and pretending to be the three degrees with my friends and entertaining them and taking part in school concerts. Yep. Okay, so at that particular time, this was when you met... Uh another group that is called rising star no rising star was a competition um cecil cecil morris was the owner of a pcr radio station in birmingham and he put on a competition called rising star okay, at yes. nightclub and i linked up with my friend michelle sutherland we formed a duo called sugar and spice and we won that competition and got picked up by um, the scaff player, Laurel Aikens, who did Guilty, bless him, rest in peace. And he took us up and produced our first record in Birmingham. Okay, so the Sugar and Spice was a band. Is that correct? A duo. It was a duo. It was me and my girlfriend. My, yeah, one of my best friends. It was a duo. Michelle Sutherland, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... After you, you started the duel, how, how was that, the both of you? How was that combination and how was it working out for you? 
It was great, you know, it was great. Cause we were playing with great people like David Forskin on the drums, Jaco Melody from Birmingham. It was fantastic, you know, we had a band. I think Eileen, I think your brother was in the band as well, actually. Yes, and it was great. We were touring around nationally and doing really well, do you know? So it was good, it was good. It was a good duo. Okay, so how long did that band, how long did that band lasted before you broke off by yourself and start to do solo? Um, it was about, oh, I think we lasted for about two to three years. Yeah, two to three years, and then I moved to London. Okay, and then you started out, um, I think you did a, a first single within that time on your own called Sweet Loving. Is that correct? No, that was the single what I actually done with Michelle. That was a single that Sugar and Spice did for Laurel Aikens. That was what's called Sweet Loving. That was done in Birmingham, voiced at Wooligan's studio. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now when you went to London, now you, 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 you hooked up with what the... You did what? The family love? What's that all about? Okay. What happened is um, I met up with some girls. The first girls that I met when I moved to London was like um, Maureen, Akash, Golden Smile and Jill Gregg. And they loved the band Family Love. And then they started to play their music to me. And one of the songs called Reluctant Lover, I decided to use it in a competition at a hotel in Houston in London. And I won that competition with that song. And someone who was actually there took me along for an audition with the band Family Love as they were looking for a singer at the time. And he told them about me and I got, and, you know, the rest is history from there. I joined the band Family Love um, back in the day who gave you great hits like Anniversary and... Um, okay. okay, I want to know, is everyone in the room is hearing everything right about now give me a thumbs up or give me a signal that we you guys are hearing both of us because we're doing this thing via satellite and we just want to know if you guys are hearing us quite well genesis yes okay well okay everybody's hearing you very well so um so being in london now um you're in the band in 1989 that's basically when you started out within that band in london correct no but sorry about this no about 85 i started with the band 80 yeah 85 i started with the band Oh, okay. Now I now I see where this is going. Okay, okay. So then you you know you. So at what part? Because at what point you, you at what point in London when you go over you start doing the music. Everything was going fine, and you decided now that you got to take a time off for yourself because now you're getting into the family thing. So you put the you know you say listen to me, put the music aside and decide to raise a family. That's right. I had to because my network in London, um, I didn't have much family in London and I didn't want to leave my children any and anywhere. So I decided to take a break for a while. I still, I still done like christenings and weddings and funerals galore, unfortunately. But um, I didn't, I weren't recording any singles. So I stopped 1989 for a while. Okay, now... A lot of a lot of a lot of female artists, especially within the the, the 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 music business, is a very hard market for females in general. Did you look at it afterwards and say, um, um, "I take so much time off. Would that affect my career?" when I decide to return back because I spend so much time with my family. Did you ever looked at that? To be honest, no, because to me, you know, I love music so much that um, I don't take myself that serious, you know what I mean, to worry about competition and that sort of thing. I just come and do my best and just go for it, you know what I mean, and just keep going. And yeah, obviously in everything you get knockbacks and knockdowns, but you just got to dust yourself off and go again. That's the way I see, you know, I mean, I just kept coming, you know what I mean? I think I think this market is big enough for everybody. So I think, yeah, and we all come with different, you know, flavors, etc. I won't be everybody's flavor, you know what I mean? But I just do my thing and some will like and embrace you. 
So I just go for it, really, to be honest with you. I just love singing. So I will just sing and sing and sing. <laughs> All right. So very well. So you had no, you know, I'm saying like, oh, well, you know what? Taking off to raise my family was a little bit of setback, but you still did good. Still, as you say, did little parties, weddings and stuff like that. So you were still in the limelight at that particular time. Your name was still out there because when you came out, you still made a name for yourself early in the 80s now there's a song tell me why when was that song released that is my comeback tune to the industry two years ago and god is so good um triple five because i had a stroke and for me to come back and be able to sing again was just fantastic because you know you must wow. have had a stroke and have had to fight and had different you know, ailments that stop them from doing things. And God is so good. He just made me sing again. And that song just took off and did really well for me and brought me back to the market where, to be honest with you, I never even used my name in the beginning. I always sang under the band's name, either Sugar and Spice or Family Love. I've only just started using Winston Moncrief Mitchell two years ago. I, people did know me, but obviously they knew me more because of the band, not my real name. So, you know, God is good. Bless up Irving. God is good. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, most definitely. Now, within that time you're going through that ailment, the ailment, you know, you were doing a lot of writing? To be honest with you, I don't really write, you know. Um, Lloyd Heron, who's the band leader for Family Love, he wrote all the songs. And recently I've been working with someone, you know, up and coming brilliant singer called J Jason, JJ Born to Sing. He wrote two of my last songs, um, I've Got Faith and I Love You, Lord. He actually wrote those two songs for me. I'm not really a writer. I can tell you what I want. So with writers, I can tell them exactly what I want the song to be about, reality, what's happening, what's happened to me in my life. And then they pen it for me and then I sing it. Beautiful. And you have the voice to go with it. Now, John Amen from Newport, he's asking, when are you going to plan to come do a show in Newport? <laughs> Where's Newport? <laughs> Um, anytime he invites me over. <laughs> Newport is in the UK. The UK? Newport. Is that near um is that near Milton Keynes? I'm not sure. Je uh, okay, well. John will have to explain. We're in uh, in the UK if you you know well. hear the question then you'll definitely get back. Now what within that time because I I, I heard beautiful cover version from you you did you did marcia griffith's cover version dreamland i played that song like about three times last night i was loving oh, yes. I, you know what? i played the song just to find a fault in the song a fault that you'll come you'll do something wrong in that song beautifully done I, I think that's one of the best cover version I've ever heard, Dreamland, when you did it. How, uh, how did you came about, like, you know what? I think this song matches me with the vocals, and, you know, I want to do this as a cover version when I go out. Okay. Actually, I haven't recorded it as a cover, but I always sing Marcia Griffith's song because she's one of my idols. She's one of my inspirations. She's just a fantastic, fantastic first lady of reggae for me. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting her in Jamaica. No, sorry, it was on the actual drum rock cru cruise this year. It was fantastic at the Miami airport. So I was so happy. Um, and I just always sing her songs. I always do Dreamland, Truly, Survival. You know what I mean? I just love her. So I'm ever singing her songs. Okay, um, John said it's Newport, Wales. Right, yeah, I know Wales. Um, whenever I'm invited down there, you know, if a promoter puts on a dance down there, if John knows someone who wants to invite some artists, you know, I've got a friend called Alison Mason who's on right now, and she's promoting Shining Stars, all up-and-coming acts and older artists that needs exposure. And she's, she's got a great team of um, artists. So if John wants to get a promoter to contact Alison Mason, she will be down there with her crew. <laughs> Hey, there you go. There you go. Listen up, John. All right. Winsome. Um, do you have problem as well as other artists in getting your music ear played? Um, 
on their pirate registrations, okay, you can get them played, you know, because their DJs are really helpful. They're beautiful. You know, you've got people like Styly, Smedley, PD Cooley. You know, you've got so much beautiful um, um, DJs that are playing your music. It's great to get into the national charts and on the sort of um, commercial radio stations, you know, like Heart, like Kiss, all them ones that are legal registrations. They're the ones who need to sort of embrace our reggae music and play it more. Get into the national charts. Okay. Now, you ch you change your name so many times on Facebook. Why? No, I haven't. I've only ever changed my name once. One and only time I've ever changed my name. I've always been Winston Moncrief Mitchell, and I changed it once because I had people like hacking into my account, and um, you know, sometimes you have some bad mind people around. Yeah, you know what? Some of the devil's children. <laughs> But, you I, know, like I, I like that. <laughs> you like that. You know, I definitely like, like that. Now, uh, my, my next question to you, um, how would you describe your music to a person who, just looking at the interview right now, is wondering, I'm going to play a song, another song by her after she answered this question, but how would you describe your music to a person, or um, what I should say, would be a fan coming up right now? Um, personally, I sing for everyone because I sing anywhere, anytime, children, adults. I sing about reality. I'm, I represent UK Lovers Rock, okay? So it's a genre for people who like love music. We're all about the love. We're lovers, not fighters, okay? Um, I sing happy music. I sing godly music. I sing about love. Yeah, I'm all about love. All right. Now, I played the for your first one, um, Hunting Me, Hurting Me, and I'm going to replay it, not to the entirety, but how did you came up with that Hurting Me? Were you going through, uh, you know, female go through maybe a bad relationship or bad whatever, and you decide to put, you know, yeah, that's as you say, you didn't wrote, wrote your song, but you, you have an input in the song. So was that the concept of this song? Yeah, that song is about, you know, you, you know, you can have a friendship, you can have a, a male and female friendship, and it's platonic. There's nothing in it. Yeah. As my mother would have said, me no want him and him no want me. We're just friends. OK. And you can have a partner who comes along and sees a perfectly innocent situation and just sees you talking to the opposite sex and gets the wrong idea. And this person just runs off home, ranting and raving because of jealousy, starts packing to leave. And you're trying to explain yourself that there's nothing in it. Stop being silly. Stop being so insecure. You know what I mean? And a lot of people can identify with that and relate to that, where you can have a male and female friendship and there's nothing in it. You know what I mean? It's not always about beneath the knees, you know what I mean? Or above the knees. It's friendship. You know what I mean? And some people take it the wrong way. So this song's about, you know, stop hurting me. You're always hurting me. That's what. That's how that came about when Lloyd wrote that. Mm -hmm. and, do and don't we know, don't we know about that? Let's play this song. Ladies and gentlemen, Winsome hurted me. Show some love, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do some hearts in the room. Tell me why. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this? Can't you see? Can't you see that you are only hurting me? You came along and saw me speaking with someone. You run up home and pack your bag. So you see the love in the room? Without knowing the facts. Oh, oh, okay, right. It's a simple explanation. All you need was investigation. So tell me why. Why are you doing this to me? Can't you see? Can't you see that you are only hurting me? 
It's not wise to let your eyes rule your heart Sorry. and to tear your love life apart. Always assess the situation before you make a wrong decision. Just ask a little question before you're taking any action. So tell me why. As I say, this is a beautiful rendition. And I'm going to play another one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you listen to her vocal. It's so it's so beautiful, the way she be on the track. All right, listen to this other uh, track. Say that you, say that you, say that you. Before we even go to that track, uh, Miss Winsome, you did that track. Uh, um, you did that track with a gentleman. Um, could you tell his name? It's Lloyd Heron. He's the leader of the Family Love Band. He started Family Love Band, and we recently done that track together as a duet with Miss Frederica Tibbs and the backing vocals. Okay, very good, very good. So it was only natural for you to do that track with him because you guys have a track record. Yeah, 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 it was lovely, yeah. I, I love working with Lloyd. Although I'm doing my solo project, I'm still singing for Family Love, currently working on an album, remodernizing some of our old tunes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, listen to the track. Say that you, say that you, say that you, yeah, baby. Mm. Simple down with me. I've got enough. You and me, straight from my heart. Sweet love, you're turning me on. You're so beautiful and warm. I do. Right, ladies and gentlemen, definitely loving the vibes here in the room. And everybody, as you look, they, they are feeling it. As I say, ladies and gentlemen, if you do ask a question and I may miss it, just keep throwing the question in the room until I picked it up, all right? Now, Miss Winsome, what has been the biggest challenge in your life as uh, an artist? Because I, I wouldn't say a reggae artist. I'd say an artist because you bounce like from different genres and you, you, you do very well at it. No. What, you know, any challenge in your life has made you, as I said, you've been through, you've been through it all. You know what I'm saying? From your health to come straight forward. Has that changed anything towards knowing that when you're doing a music now, you want to do especially certain music? Because I know you do certain spiritual music. 
is that part of what you've been through you decide some of your song could merge you within that aspect okay um one of the biggest challenges for me personally is my confidence you know i was a little bit uh, people won't believe this but i'm a little bit shy and um i just nervous sometimes you know i mean i just nervous and um it's just having confidence in yourself really and having faith that you know you can do it if you really try put your mind into it um and i'd love to be able to write as well that you know i think that that is one of my barriers i think if you could write if i could write more about how i'm feeling i think that'd be better for me um where the spiritual part is coming is because of me just wanting to give thanks to god you know i have to give thanks to god daily because i'm here because i've always wanted to see my children through the worst um and just to, you know you, you know there's a lot of mothers at the moment that are burying their children and just grieves my heart and i just pray to god each day that i can you know see them and balancing the work you know because i work full time as well i'm a career advisor so i work with young people i manage a project for young people and engaging them back into education training and employment so balance that with the music business um but you know um as I said, God has been really, really good, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm one that, as I think somebody just put, I think it was my friend Gloria just put up, I'm an overcomer, do you know what I mean? And I don't, and I always go, I always find a way, there's always gonna be obstacles in life. And I think I always find a way under it, over it, through it, walk straight through it. You get knocked down, you dust yourself up, you get up again. So I don't really let nothing hold me back, to be honest. I'm one of these people who, I'm a fighter, do you know what I mean? And I'll fight through to what I want to do. I don't profess to be the greatest. Most definitely, I heard that you, you, you also, you also have a charity that's coming up in Jamaica that you're going to be a part about, part with. So tell us a little bit more of that. Um, it's just fantastic. It's just about um, it's a lady called Patricia Mackenzie Thomas, and she's actually puts this on annually. She does something here to raise money every year, and then she puts that on in Jamaica, where she gets a lot of keynote speakers from all the different parts of education to come and talk about what they want to do for the young people out in Jamaica. Um, I'm not actually a keynote speaker. I'm actually just performing, but it's great to be part of that and to be doing something for you know my people. My parents are from, from Jamaica, so it's great to be part of that. I'm really looking forward to that performing at that event. I think it's a two day, yeah, it's a two day conference and then with a oh, big. Okay, also, there's a gentleman by the name of Erwin Woolery, a Wooligan. I think he did mix one of your first single. Uh, how was that? I, I think you guys are pretty much always on the music era. How is that? Yeah, he's been there a long time because I think I did that when I was 18. Fantastic. Um, he's based in Birmingham. And I um, that first song, that what you mentioned, Sweet Loving by Laura Lakins, he mixed it at his recording studio. So, you know, that was great. It was fantastic because it was my first experience of being in a studio and recording a song. So, you know, that's one of the things I add to my greatest achievement to date. Mm -hmm. well, how would you define the word? To yourself, right? You you're looking from your perspective of you know where you've been and where you at right now. How would you define the word success to you? For me personally, without bigging up my chest, I am so happy and appreciative of the little success that I've had personally because I've got some wonderful people that support me. And I think I've always said to people, you know, it's not just down to voice, it's down to personality because you've got some wicked singers out there. You've got, you know, good, better, best, yeah? I don't put myself in no particular category. I just enjoy singing and I respect the fact that people have, um, you know, um, or use me for quite a few shows. I respect a lot of people, you know, like the TLCs, like the Stylies, like the um, Peter Remus, Orlando at the big Giants of Lovers Rock concert, Trevor Gatecrash at the Legends of Legends, Alison Mason, you know, Cecil Rubin. I just respect the people like Edgar, Senator B, who've, you know, um, used me for shows. Really, really happy. And those are good producers that are putting on a lot of productions for people perform you know providing a platform i'm just happy and blessed i just respect it you know what i mean I, you know I, I don't expect to become no fame i'm not beyonce yeah look at me you all, me all. <laughs> right i'm not beyonce but it's just great to still be singing it i'm it's actually 54 so it's great you know what i'm not even i'm not even agreeing with you with the last part but you're not no beyonce whatever because your voice is is, is so blessed so golden you know what i'm saying so uh, definitely i wouldn't even say that all right your voice is beautiful now um this question that i i want to ask you um you you work with the likes of 
couple reggae icon in Jamaica, like Lieutenant Stitchy, you share the stage with them. Tell, give me that experience and how it was. Fantastic, amazing, amazing. To touch the stage with the likes of Lieutenant Stitchy, Frankie Paul, Lukey D is just fantastic, fantastic. And it's not just about the Jamaican acts. I've shared it with some fantastic UK acts as well, you know, like the Janet Kays, the Carol Thompsons, the Lorna G's, the Audrey Scott's, the Paulette Taja, Michael Gordon. You know, it's wicked, 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 wicked. Do you know what I mean? Just wicked. It's a good feel. It's a good feel factor. That's very beautiful. Now, no, I want to ask you this question. Do, um, give me, um, could you give me like a, a name of an uh, 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 artist that is out there that someone would recognize and they give you some form of advice within your career, what you should or shouldn't do in the music business? I'll tell you one of my, one of my, this is a sister I sing with quite a lot, right? And she has inspired me so much. She's been on the market for, on the, she's been on the industry for a long, long time. She sang with the likes of like Gregory Isaac, Delroy Wilson, yeah? It's Frederica Tibbs. You know, she gives me so much inspiration and confidence and always boosts me and encourages me. You know what I mean? Um, she's, I would say she's one of my main person. You know I mean? I'm hoping for you to do an interview with her actually, because she's fantastic, but she's always an encouragement to me. And the likes of, I don't know if you know, um, oh, I can't remember her name now. Yeah, she's from Birmingham. Ruby Turner, she's quite big on the circuit. She encouraged me as well back in the day. Um, Carol Thompson's a big UK reggae lovers rock singer. And she actually sat on one of the panels when I was singing and where I won the competition. So I respect her as well. Mm -hmm. hey, born and raised in Birmingham, England. Now, I want for those who definitely just logging in for the first time i want you to definitely tell him where you're broadcasting because we're doing this thing ladies and gentlemen via satellite and we're just having fun in the room right now so say something again to your fans let they know hi peeps um i'm coming live and direct from london in england and it's a great opportunity to be here speaking to triple five and to all the listeners that are listening in at the moment respect mm-hmm all right, now I'm going to play another song from you, and um, I Got Faith, and uh, that, that, that song is a very spiritual song. Now, I know this song is definitely from right here, listening to the, the, whole, the whole words of the song and things like that, and the way you put that song out. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this song by Miss Winsome, I've Got Faith. Written by the great J.J. Bond. In God I put my trust. In him I do believe. Through his grace, I've got my faith. Through his grace, I've got my faith. In this life I've come to be alive. Through friends are hard to find The more there for you when life sometimes gets hard And there are some that gives you just a little time Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got faith. It's a beautiful song. And you know what? I'm going to play the next one with that. Since we're on this topic, the whole spiritual thing, you did another song that's called I Love You, Lord. Listen to the next one. Listen to the other song, ladies and gentlemen. Show some love in the room. Hello there. Hello, my love. I'm standing and I'm knocking at your door. Do you have a little time for me to share my heart? I've got to let you know how wonderful you are. Ladies and gentlemen, if I was just juggling this song, I would pull it up. They just keep telling me to pull it up, and we can't do that in the interview, but I'm loving this song. I have to put this song also with the others in the rotation. I'm feeling the vibes. I'm loving it. Now, Miss Winsome, what type of friend do you have, or who do you keep as your friend? I've got some beautiful friends. I've got loads of associates, but I've got some beautiful friends. A lot of them listen to you already. People like Margaret, who actually introduced me to you. Bless her, Margaret Hendricks. I've got Gloria Connage. I've got Susan Clark. I've got Maureen Agard. I've got Michelle. I've got Veronica Cranston. I've got Lady Sugar, Sonia V, Vicky, Jackie Moore, Bear, Vivan, Alison, Frederica, Derek. I've got so much beautiful. I am blessed. I am truly blessed with some beautiful, beautiful friends. You know, God is good. You know, and they're not just, for, they, they're not wanting for anything. They just love you for who you are, love you con con conditionally, unconditionally. You know what I mean? They're just beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you was to name one individual, a, 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 an artist that you would definitely love to do a, 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 a do it with, who would that be? There's two. <laughs> there's Marcia Griffiths, that's my girl, and there's Beris Hammond, that's my guy. <laughs> they were the two I'd love to sing with. Yeah. Definitely. Now, my next question to you. Now, you're, you, you're doing the nine to five. Yeah. Um, you, you're, back into the, you're back into the music field. Yeah. And um, how do you, you know what I'm saying, balance nine to five, music, and now your family? How do you do that? I'm, I, I personally class myself as hyperactive. I never stop. What I'm trying to do is learn how to chill. <laughs> Okay, but I'm ever busy. My diary, as my friend Maureen, I have to have an itinerary written down <laughs> with everything in it. Like when I'm, you know, when I'm when I'm working, yeah, my daytime job. Then evening, I've got to be either recording in the studio or I'm, I've got events. Um, you know, I've got performances at the weekend. But God is good, you know. what I mean, I just I'm just on it all the time. Just on it all the time. 
<laughs> you know, you have to balance it, but I just, it's just basically being organized, to be honest, you know what I mean? And time managing yourself. And what I've tried to do is not, you know, like I, within the month, I'd say I'm going to take some time out. Like I think June and July, I'm slowing down a little bit. Yeah, just to rest a bit because I don't want to suffer from burnout. I don't want people to get fed up of seeing me. Do you know what I mean? And you've got to come differently sometimes. If you keep seeing you all the time, it's the same old, same old. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to get like that. So I'm trying to balance it out that I'm not doing something every single week because people will get bored. Do you know what I mean? And I've got to give other artists opportunity as well, you know, for them to get out there and do things as well. So I've got to share the love. Okay. Definitely love that. Love the answer in that. Now, my next question to you, um, since you're pretty much busy and things like that, what about your social life? You know what I'm saying? Because they always say a great empress have a great king. So how's that part? <laughs> we're still a search. <laughs> no, I've, I've been with a partner for 25 years, but we've just <laughs> we've, we've separated a few years now, but we're still good friends. Um, you know, you know what I mean? I've got children for him and that. But um I'm I'm searching. I'm searching. I'm searching. When Mr. Wright comes along, I will know who he is. You know what I mean? Do you do you Okay, but do you think that the music will definitely if you sometimes being a a, a a busy person, you know what I'm saying, a workaholic like you know, I consider myself as an entrepreneur, do you think that also will, you know, affect that part of your social life? Sometimes you may have to take a break to see what's around the corner. Oh, God, my daughter's cursing me. Bless up, Cassie. <laughs> my daughter's cursing me. Um, basically, um, you know what? You know what? We've got to compromise. We meet each, we, you meet someone and you connect, okay? Um, we talk about it. We compromise. He's got to know what my life's about. I've got to know what his life's about. We've got to you know, compromise and say, obviously, if we're going to be together, then we have to make time for each other. There's got to be some quality time spent. Um, you know, I, I will make time. If I meet a partner and he's the right partner for me and God send him with all the, you know, the cri meets the criteria, yeah, God fearing, real. All right. Lo love, love that answer. Love that answer. Now, female singer, very beautiful, very gorgeous. You're doing stage shows and stuff like that. You getting so much approach by guys, also artists within your same genre and stuff like that. How do you and fans? How do you separate your fans from a male groupie? Uh, you know, what I'm saying, knowing hitting on you or stuff like that, and you, you know, you don't want to bash them too much, come on too hard because you may lose that fan base. So, how do you, you know, separate yourself with not disrespecting a male? As long as the male comes to me respectfully, polite, okay, know what kind of conversation they can have with me, then we can always say hi and cool. You know what I mean? Obviously, they will not be getting my phone number. They will not be coming to my house, etc. But I can invite them to wherever I'm doing a recording, etc. Um, I'm very much... A I don't like disrespectful guys, you know what I mean? It depends on your conversation and how you approach me and how you come to me. I'm not better than nobody, you know what I mean? Everybody is somebody and everyone is someone's child. But talk to me decently, no problem. Man's going to like a woman, a woman's going to like a man, yeah? But if they can just take, I wouldn't knock them back in a horrible way. It's just basically I'm not ready for a relationship right now or I'm cool, you know, or I still wear my rings. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a disrespectful person. I've got some lovely guy friends as well, you know, who are protective. You know, me and them get on well, like my smedley, you know, he's my darling. I've got some good men friends who are bonify friends. So um, keep them at bay, you know what I mean? I see you. Like, I was going to ask you this question. How, how do you, because I've seen, I seen video of your live performance on stage, but within yourself, how do you rate your 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 stage performance from one to five? Ooh, ooh, that's a hard one. I just do my best. I just, I just, I just do my best. I just, I don't know. I just do my best, you know what I mean? And from the people that are giving me vibes and singing along with me to my songs, that makes me feel good. So I will give a hundred percent, you know what I mean? So I will give my five. I don't know how others feel, but I will try to give my five to my people. Have, have you ever did your best? And uh, especially me as a DJ and stuff like that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the hardest critics on myself. 
I play over back my recordings and, you know, I said, you know what? I should have done this. I should have done that. I shouldn't have played this. I shouldn't have played that. Are you a hard critics on yourself like when you watch your performance? And how do you go about correcting it in the next stage show? Just rehearsing, memorizing. As I'm getting older and because of the stroke, sometimes my memory, I have memory lapses. So I just start reciting the song. <laughs> my friend Gloria, um, she saw me at... Um, the other night I did something at the Shining Stars for Alison Mason and I didn't want to forget the words of the song. So I started, I stood there and I just started to recite, <laughs> recite, recite. And as I'm singing along, I just get prepared for the next um, word in, you know what I mean? Just preparing myself really. And, you know, you can always just keep practicing and rehearsing to just that you can get it to the level where you want it to get to. But you, I am a, I am a critic. Moin will tell you, I do, I always criticize myself, but you know, just give thanks. Just give thanks for the opportunity to be able to sing and to be on stage. You know, it's just a great opportunity. Next question, you know, started out in the 80s, doing very well out there. Have you ever, you know, at this moment, present we're talking about now, you, 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 a, a fan come up to you and like, I would love you to perform this particular song. And you're like, when they tell you this song, you're like, oh my God, I don't remember this song because I did it so long. Have that ever happened to you? And how do you go around it? You know, any a lot of these people on here can tell you, you know, I kind of always sing, if I'm talking to someone, you can always, you can guarantee a song's going to come into it. And I will try or I'll tell them to give me the words and I'll try to sing it to them. Because, you know, sometimes you're out and people will say to you, oh, sing this for me or please sing for me. And I'll always do it. I'll always oblige. You know what I mean? If I know it, I will sing it. If I don't, I'll say, tell me the words or sing with me. You know what I mean? That's me, really. Very good. What do you fear the most in this business? You know what I say to everyone? You see, why else strike past the iron is hot? Because, you know, today you're somebody, tomorrow you're nobody. You know what I mean? So I don't really fear anything as such. I'm just having fun as we go along. I take each day as it comes and I'm just singing and doing my thing. And when it dries up and no one wants to hear me no more, all good. Because you know what? I just give thanks for what has happened and what has taken place. That's me, really. Sorry, it might sound boring. But... And how would you like to... No, you're not. You're not. And how would you like to be remembered? As a bubbly person, a friendly person, a loving person, you know what I mean? You know, one that's the heart and the soul of the party will always be fun and have a laugh, you know what I mean? And don't take life too serious and just treat people how I would like to be treated, you know what I mean? And just respect one and all. I, I definitely know how I would remember Miss Winsome. A beautiful lady with a gorgeous smile. And, and she said that she's a very shy person. I'm, I'm still looking for it. I'm not seeing it. You know what I'm saying? But right about now, I'm going to play another song from her. And it's called Something About You. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Come and let me hold you. Let me tell you, there's something about you that makes me want to love you. Come and let me hold you. Let me tell you, there's something about you that makes me want to love you. You've got no reason, so why are you leaving? Tell me what's going on in your mind. I just got to know If you're going away from me Then please tell me the truth You've got to face reality You must tell me the truth You've got to face reality Ooh, yeah It makes me want to love you. You've got no reason, so why are you leaving? There's only one in my life, and that's you. I can't take you going far away. Stay for one more day. Come and let me 
hold you Let me tell you There's something about you That makes me want to love you You've got no reason So why are you leaving? You know that I only want you love Love means you and me Why can't I ever make you see Must tell me the truth You've got to face reality Must tell me the truth You've got to face reality Definitely, ladies and gentlemen, something about you, a very beautiful rendition. Now, Miss Winsome, my question, I'm, I'm going to put you in a spot right now. <laughs> Look, she's laughing now. <laughs> tell me, right, my question to you, tell me five things that you cannot live without. Five things. God, <laughs> my children. My mom, my bonafide sister, and my family. Okay. But, okay. I, I let you slide with that one because you say mom, and mom will still consist of a family. All right. Now, now, my question again a lot of times, family are not there. You know what I'm saying? And when you hear one of your songs start playing on the local station, all of a sudden, a lot of family and friends start running out of the woodwork. That's my cousin. That's my auntie. We're good and Ray, Ray, Ray. Do you have that strong family support from the get-go? Definitely. 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 Very strong, very, very strong family ties. I'm a family-oriented person. I actually put on a family link up every year because, you know, people run busy lives and always doing something, and we're always meeting for funerals, etc. So at least once a year, everyone's got to relax everything what they're doing and make an effort to link up. We play some sports for the kids. We cite some poetry, get the kids singing. We talk about family history that the kids can get to know about their families, or, um, know each other. So I'm a, definitely a family orientated person. Yeah. Hey, I know you work along alongside youths and stuff like that. Um, what do you what, what what do you have to say about all these killings that's going around and things like that, especially with kids? And you know, and I know you work around them, you're very passionate about that. We say something towards that. Listen, I am so hurt. Even today I read something about a youth getting stabbed for no reason, innocent young guy. I, it grieves my heart. I don't know what they're drinking, what's different. I keep saying to people, back in the day, we used to fight rubber dog fist to fist, you know what I mean? A one-off knife business, no gun business. I don't know what it is, this peer pressure, this greed, this territorial thing. I don't, it just breaks my heart, breaks my heart for the parents, you know what I mean? The victims, family. It's just such a knock-on effect. You know, these youths need to educate themselves, you know what I mean, skill up, you know what I mean, skill up, man, they're killing off tomorrow's doctors, architects, you know what I mean, they're killing off the next generation of people over what stupidness, you know what I mean, people get, a, they, a man's life don't worth nothing to the youth, I used to do some work at one of the prisons, and you know, I used to say to the kids, where do you see yourself in the next three or five years, and some of the answers were like, dead, and it didn't mean nothing to them. They don't care about life, nothing. They don't fear nothing, you know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're drinking different from what we drank or what we ate. But it's just, it's heart-wrenching. It breaks my heart. You know what I mean? I've worked with youth for the last 30 years. I think it's the milk. It's the milk. Something, something, my brother. I'm going to know. But it's sad. It's really sad. Really sad. That's okay, why. my next question to you. Um, since we're on that subject. Where do you see yourself within the next five years? Well, if there's breath still in the old girl, I will still be singing, <laughs> still be having fun, still be with my mates, them doing things, you know, activities, doing things with my kids. You know what I mean? Still working within, 
um, the education, working with youths, you know what I mean? God spare my life. That's what I, you know, still making music if I can. Okay. Now, I have two more questions, two more to end the, 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 the interview. Hold on one second there. All right. All right. Now, hold on. Okay, sorry for that, ladies and gentlemen. We're just trying to, to get the the audio going and stuff like that. I don't want to double up because of the the delay that we have. Um have you ever had any issues with engineer working in the past with your music? No, no, I haven't actually. I mean, I've worked with some fantastic producers like Derek Fevier, like Gary Digitech, you know, like UK Pressure Aaron and Styley. Um, and God has been really good. Um, they're patient with me, you know what I mean? Because um, I don't think I'm the quickest, you know what I mean? I don't think I always get things quick, but I try my best. And, you know, it's nice to work with people who are patient with you. So I think I'd more give the engineers problem than they give me. And I've worked with beautiful people, you know what I mean? And, you know, as I said, I like like-minded people and come they respect me and I respect them. We get along. I haven't really had no problems. You know, I'm not saying, you know, obviously there is always obstacles, but give thanks. I've had some great times, you know, I mean, I've worked with great people like Lloyd Heron, who's fantastic. You know, Mackie, my friend who manages me and he's great as well. You know what I mean? Very patient. You know what I mean? Hey, you know? Definitely. Now, for your fans out there that they've been following you for a long time, and for someone, a youngster right now, that's coming up in the business, looking at you, being interviewed, and decide that they want to be a singer, go to school, but they decide that, listen to me, I want to be a singer like Winsome. She inspired me. Now, what would you say to that individual if they approach you about the business? Okay. Okay, I just encourage them to get some, um, get um, you know, uh, um, what do you call it? Oh, my brain, see, my brain's going now. Um, doo -doo -doo, what do you call it? When they do some recordings, self, self recordings of themselves, whether they write or whether they sing, and get them sent off to demo. producer. Those demo. demo. That's it. Demo. <laughs> That's it. Get some demos done. Send them off to producers. Um, enter talent competition. There's loads of stuff going around at the moment. You know, you've got, especially in London, we've got like, you know, Britain's got talent, Britain's got, sorry, yeah, Britain's got talent, Britain's got reggae, the voice. There's loads of things that are happening. You know, enter talent competitions, put someone in their communities, ask people to put them on for them. Um, and just write off to producers, sending them, you know, copyright the, the copyright their, um, their demo. Yeah. Put a newspaper with a date in there when they send it off and keep for themselves as well. That no one can't teeth their music because it does happen. OK. Um, and just keep going. And and always remember that even if even if someone don't pick you up now, you just keep going. You just keep on keep on at it. And sometimes you've got writers, you've got singers, you've got musicians. You might have to swap roles. You might even have to write the song, not sing it yourself or get somebody else to sing it. You can still get your fame from that, you know, registered with PRS. You know, I mean, there's loads of people out there that write in songs. would love to be singers, but, you know, it just hasn't quite hit the market yet. But send their music off to other singers. Get other singers to sing their songs. Um, keep trying. Enter school talent competition. Do you know what I mean? Um, speak to people who are in the business to refer you to someone else, you know, recommend you to someone else. Yeah. You know what? You said something so right with a passion. Now, a lot of, especially when I go to Jamaica, everybody is an artist. Everybody in the street is an artist. And I always say, it's not everybody could be an artist, it could be a singer or whatever, but you could write the song, give it to somebody, and you still get your creds on that because everybody think that because they can write, they, they, they can put it out there. And sometimes you don't have that voice and stuff like that. Now, everyone in the room right now, they said they want to hear you on a, without the instrumental behind, they want to hear you sing a song right now maybe not to the entirety but you could go right ahead okay 
Well, my signature song for everybody knows it. Okay, <laughs> I sing it everywhere because I have to give thanks. Okay, and it's a song by Vegas, which I have had the opportunity to do with him as well on the cruise. I know, so that was really good. And I just basically say, "We are blessed. We are blessed every day of our lives. We are blessed when we wake up." in the morning until we lay our heads to rest every day of our lives we are blessed thanks oh my gosh and you said you had the opportunity to also do it with vegas yeah, I'm with my bright self. We was on the boat because all the artists on the ship were just so friendly and down to earth, no egos there at all. And I just went up to him. I said, Vegas, nice to meet you. My name is Winsom. I do a bit of singing in London. I said, would you give, would you bless me with doing this track with me? Um, you know, I um, I always open with your song for every concert I do. And he said, yes, go on, my sister. And we just did it together. It was wicked. <laughs> it was wicked. Most definitely, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Winsome is here, and I definitely want to thank thank her definitely, and I also want to thank no other than Miss Margaret Hendricks because without her, the link wouldn't have been made. And it's so funny. She said to me, she said, "You know what, Triple? Um, I know this particular artist, but she's so busy. Let me go try and find her because I may not not able to get her also because she's so busy. So let me try and see if I could get her and, you know, so that you could feature her and stuff like that. And I definitely am loving this. You know what I'm saying? Loving your music. I'm loving this interview. And as you see in the room, the fans also are loving the whole aspect of you being here and sharing your music to everybody. Um. One more thing I want to ask you. You were born again in Birmingham. Were you from a Jamaican parentage? I am. My dad was from St. Mary's. Bless him. May he rest in peace. And my mom's from Ochi Reyes, St. Anne's. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now since you have the, you know, the, the, the Jamaican parentage, what, what, what's your favorite food from Jamaica? Now you're going to slap me now because I don't really like resting your food. <laughs> I like planting. That is one of my favorites. I like planting. And I like pepper <laughs> steak. <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> the yam and the okra is not me. <laughs> and the cow foot and the cow neck and the <laughs> pig foot and the chicken no, foot. We'll, we'll, leave that, we'll leave that to Russ. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Definitely. Chips, girl. Thank, thank you very, very much. On behalf of the Concrete Lion Zone that uh, manages the Lion TV show, we definitely want to thank you for being here to share your moments. And um, as I'm going to say to you, you have my email address. You have any song, just sh ship it off to me, and I'll definitely put you into rotation. And, you know, anytime you feel free, you want to come back and show some love, Definitely, you know how the contact go. I have your contact, and you know how to make your contact to us. Thank you very, very much. And one more thing, I, again, I wanted to say, show some love to your fans them out there on your way out. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and I want you to tell them before, hold on, hold on one second. I want you to tell them, show some love, and also to tell them where they can find your music. Blessings. Okay. I want to respect everyone for tuning in. Love you to my London people. You don't know all the New York people, Jamaican people. Bless you, family, everybody. Enough respect. Um, my tunes can be found on iTunes or on MrStyley.com. Um, all the leading downloading um, um, digital web links, okay? You can find the tunes. And for those of you who are in London, okay, Tomorrow, um, Good Friday, we're rolling out to Reading. So if you want to come on that coach trip, meet at Acre Lane, we can go there. Or I'm doing a big gospel set down at Solon Road in Brixton. You know, it would be lovely to have your company. Okay, looking really forward to seeing you. Or I'm in Leicester on the 6th of May. So that'd be really good to have some of you down there. All right, big up everybody. And um, I forgot to tell you, Triple X, I'm going to be referring to some people to you, okay, um, from the camp, from the UK camp, a lot of the new um, singers and some past sing singers that are, you know, experienced singers for you to do interviews with them if Definitely. you wish. Definitely, we're going to love that. 
yes, I'm going to be referring a lot of people to contact you by email and send you their bio and their songs and hopefully you can get in touch with them and do an interview because we've got to get our UK reggae artists live in New York. <laughs> yeah? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, proud to have Miss Winsome Montclair Mitchell in the studio here via satellite from from London to the United States and all over the world. We want to thank you once again for the link. It's a pleasure, double measure, and definitely have yourself a beautiful night. And to all the fans in the room that came out to see her, thank you guys very much. And uh, hopefully, you definitely could, we could definitely link up again. We broadcast coming this Friday, and just stay tuned. Always go on my po on my page because I'm always putting out posting of when I'm doing my shows and stuff like that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very very much. And again, all the triplets, we also want to thank you for playing your part in definitely getting things going. And uh, we can't stop forget Miss Margaret Hendricks. She played a vital role in this. Thank you very much, Margaret. Love you. And all the best. I definitely you. just wave at them as I play the last, this play, play one of your song again. I want you to just continue, just sing towards it with your fans, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Winsome Montcliffe Mitchell. Bless you, bless you, Cassie, Tiana, Britannia, bless up. Margaret, love you, fame. Come and let me hold you. Let me tell you, there's something about you that makes me want to love you. You've got no reason why you're leaving. Tell me what's going on in your mind. I just got to know if you're going away from me, then please tell me the truth. You've got to face reality. You must tell me the truth. You've got to face reality. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Come and let me hold you. Let me tell you, there's something about you that makes me want to love you. You've got no reason, so why are you leaving? There's only one in my life, and that's you. I can't take you going far away. Stay for one more day. You gotta face reality. You must tell me the truth. You gotta face reality. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah.
But I just got to know if you're going away from me, then please tell me the truth. Let's up. You gotta face reality. You must tell me the truth. You gotta face reality. Good night, everyone. Good night, Miss Mitchell. Good night. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you.